Hello, and welcome to Top Story Daily Edition. I'm JMS Editor-in-Chief Jonathan Tobin. Thanks for joining me for a discussion on the most pressing issues in the Jewish world. Please like, subscribe, and give us good reviews when you listen to the show. Now let's get started. It took the City University of New York, or CUNY, nearly three weeks to do it. But the public university's chancellor and board of trustees eventually got around to condemning an anti-Semitic speech made at the CUNY Law School graduation ceremony on May 12th. The oration was delivered by graduating student Fatima Musa Mohammed, a member of Students for Justice in Palestine, which is the activist wing of the anti-Semitic BDS movement. In it, she uttered egregious lies about Israel and Zionists, but anchored her attacks on the Jewish state in far-left talking points about the evils of capitalism, imperialism, colonialism, and white supremacy. She railed against the police, as well as the federal prosecution of the Holy Land Foundation, who were the fundraisers for the Hamas terrorists. She spoke of the mission of the future lawyers getting their degrees that day as waging an ongoing battle against the rule of law. Mohammed received a rousing ovation from the graduate students that was reportedly joined in by school officials. But once the video of the 12-minute speech went viral, it generated angry pushback from Jewish organizations and Republican politicians. The criticism was appropriate. Mohammed claimed that Israel continues to indiscriminately rain bullets and bombs on worshippers murdering the old, the young, attacking even funerals and graveyards as it encourages lynch mobs to target Palestinian homes and businesses, as it imprisons its children, as it continues its project of settler colonialism, expelling Palestinians from their homes, carrying the ongoing Nakba that our silence is no longer acceptable. Unquote. Her claims would better describe the actions of Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad than that of Israel. But this does illustrate just how anti-Semitic canards and calls for destruction of the only Jewish state on the planet have become mainstream discourse in academia. The school initially pulled the video from its website, but then restored it when left-wing activists condemned it for bowing to pressure from Zionists and conservatives. But as the story gained momentum, the CUNY board realized that it had to distance itself from the incident. Likely, they are hoping that this will be the end of it as far as they're concerned. It shouldn't. The speech was just the most recent in a string of stories that have pointed to the way CUNY has become a stronghold of far-left ideology and anti-Semitism. But for all of the criticisms that the event caused to be aimed at the school, the remedies that have been proposed in response to it are utterly inadequate. The Jewish Community Relations Council of New York called for CUNY to, quote, revise its guidelines, unquote, for graduation speeches. The Anti-Defamation League agreed. But given that the speech was reportedly submitted in advance in both written and verbal form, and approved by the law school officials who clearly thought there was nothing amiss with a speech filled with anti-Semitic tropes, the problem goes deeper than guidelines. Closer to the mark was the Rabbinic Alliance of America, which called for changes at the school that would be decided by a fact-finding commission. Such a body, however, would be bogged down in a protracted procedure that would be controlled by the ideologues and their enablers and could accomplish nothing. CUNY may be an extreme example of how the hard left has captured academia, yet the content of Muhammad's speech is directly connected to the way these radicals have imposed their secular religion of anti-racism on so many institutions and made their woke catechism of diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, the creed from which none may dissent. Her smears are the product of that idiot. Seen in context, rather than as an out, she is a not untypical product of American higher education in 2023. And the educational establishment is content to let things stay that way. Accountability, then, must involve more than superficial gesture. What is needed is a response that is on the surface just as radical as the problem it is seeking to address. And for that, we have an excellent example in Florida. 
Earlier this month, Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill that would defund all DEI programs at Florida public colleges. Unlike most of those who have noted the dismal state of affairs in academia, DeSantis wasn't content to snipe away from the sidelines. Instead, he cut straight to the heart of the problem. It must be acknowledged that a school like CUNY Law, which is widely acknowledged to be completely captured by the extremists who approved and cheered Muhammad's speech, is a product of the DEI mindset and the related toxic concepts of intersectionality and critical race theory. Anti-Semitism isn't a bug of the modern university that has been taken over by DEI indoctrination. It's a feature. The academic establishment is so compromised by this ideological agenda, the talk of reform that doesn't involve sweeping measures that force them to change, is meaningless. If schools like CUNY are to change, then their funding must be cut off. That isn't possible at large private institutions with massive endowments like Ivy League schools supported by left-wing alumni. Private philanthropic foundations are also now so thoroughly woke that those who are dependent on them for donations must bow to their dictate, which means accepting and adopting DEI measures. But public universities and colleges are dependent on state funding. And that is the only way ordinary citizens can apply the leverage needed to ensure that hate mongers like Mohammed are no longer treated as campus darlings. Though some New York politicians condemn Mohammed's hate speech, such defunding is, alas, impossible in deep blue New York. Notwithstanding this controversy, the political and media establishment in New York doesn't really have a problem with continuing to subsidize a bastion of anti-Semitism like CUNY. The irony was that initially it was not Muhammad's slander-filled ideological rant that drew attention to this ceremony. At first, it was the reaction of students to the appearance of New York City Mayor Eric Adams at their graduation ceremony. Students booed and raised their middle fingers at Adams, while most of the graduating class turned their backs when he spoke. That was a reaction to his so far inadequate attempts to rein in the crime wave started by his predecessor Bill de Blasio's policies and exacerbated by the Black Lives Matter riots that undermined the police. That incident generated an article in the New York Times that didn't even mention Muhammad's anti-Semitic speech, though it also noted that such leftist dogmatism was to be expected at CUNY. Indeed, as of this writing, the Times has not printed a single word about Muhammad's speech. Though it made the front page of the tabloid New York Post, Post typically with the headline about Muhammad read, Stark Raving Grad, it was apparently not considered newsworthy by the liberal newspaper of record. Muhammad was not without her defenders. Anti-Zionist, Times contributor, and CUNY journalism professor Peter Beinart claimed that her lies about Israel were true, illustrating once again that some Jews are supporters of anti-Semitism. He was joined in this by the Council on American Islamic Relations Care, which was founded as a political front for the same Holy Land Foundation Muhammad defended, who described the anger her anti-Semitism generated as an attempt to suppress free speech. And yes, that's the same care that was consulted by the Biden administration in preparing its strategy for combating anti-Semitism. The time has passed for Jewish groups to content themselves with statements complaining about such incidents. If they are to be taken seriously as opponents of anti-Semitism, then they must demand the defunding of all schools that engage in DEI indoctrination that helps generate this sort of open hatred. DeSantis and those who support his much-needed counterattack are the forces seeking on the forces seeking to impose radicalism on students or accused of fighting a culture war. Though it is the left that started the war on Western culture. But anyone who is interested in combating anti-Semitism must join this war. The only way to make a difference is to insist on defunding institutions that foster hatred. Thanks for listening. Please remember to tune in every day for Top Story Daily Edition and every week for the full hour-long JNS TV program. Whether you're listening to us on Apple, Google Play, Spotify, 
or any of the other podcast platforms, or on the JNS YouTube channel. Please like and or subscribe to Top Story. Click on the bell for notifications and give us good reviews. Please write to us at editor at jns.org and let us know where you listen or watch the show and what you think. And remember, keep reading and thinking for yourself.